welcome back to The Sit Down. This is episode 14.2, and you know her, you see her. We're back again with the wonderful Deandra. And as promised, we're gonna kinda of dive into mental health. Mental health. Mental health, because that's a really big thing, and I don't feel like it get, gets talked about enough, right? It's, it's always been a big thing, right? It's always been a big thing. And I think, especially with this year, with this whole COVID thing, with a lot of people, the tendency is to put put your well-being into external things that can be taken away very quickly. Yep. I think that left a lot of people very empty and very lost in terms of what's my direction of life, exactly. right? And I think it really showed people, you know, how vulnerable you can be to external stimulus and how that can play with your head and play with your mind, right? Very much so. So, Deandra, have you, you know, during this whole year and period, right, what, for you, you know, how has, you know, mental health sort of impacted you? Have you ever, like, had any experiences with it or anything like that? I, I, I surely have. So, um, I, I'm in a relationship, but I live by myself, and I can be a loner. Like, I like to choose when I'm around people. And sure. when you live by yourself, you can say, hey, it's well, nice. I, I want people over, I don't <laughs> want people over. So, pre-pandemic, it's like, okay, I'm in a good mood this weekend, people can come over, or I just feel like having people around. It's different when you have the choice to have people around and you know enjoy human interaction as opposed to um, you don't have a choice. Now you have to be home by yourself. Like, it's best that you not be around people. So then you realize, okay, I like when I had the option, even though most of the time I'd be here by myself because I wanted to be here by myself, not, not having that option, or having that option taken away, I'm like, okay, well nobody would be here anyways, but when I had the option to have people here, it feels different. It feels different. Yeah. No, no, I know I don't have a choice. So I think that affected me where um, it gave me one time to be by myself because I had no choice. But at the same time, it really, you know, it gives you, sometimes it gives you too much time to get into your own mm. head. It gives you too much time to get into your own head. And that can be a good or a bad thing, bad thing depending on who you are, you know. Um, if you're self-destructive, you can only probably find more, more you know, more think fuel. more, exactly, oh, more yeah. bad things, you know, so I remember um, a, a part of, you know, a part of this whole mental health talk too is one, you know, you're, you end up by yourself more and then you realize how much you value human interaction that we, we literally yearn for it and it is a part of our, it's a very vital part of our survival that we yep. have interaction with other people. But I think another part of it is this work from home thing. I think we've all, mm. in some ways, depending on what you do for, for a living, had to um, end up in a little work from home bubble. And the thing for me with the work from home thing was that there was no separation between work and home. Because if I'm, if I'm working from home, then work is home, and home is work. And I, I, the pre-pandemic, I would like the idea that when I get off, I'm Turn off. Turn the switch off, you're done. I'm off. Yep. But now I wake up, and I'm at work. Mm. I, I wake up and now work, work is home and home is work. And I call my home, and I think I, I, I might have even gotten in trouble at work for this, but I call, and I, cause I, cause I can be a very vocal person. That's something I learned about myself because I worked in an environment different from people that I'm used to living in. <laughs> you know, I, I learned a lot of things about myself working in my current environment only because when you're around people that are like you or when you're around people that I guess just accept you the way you are, you don't realize that and that's not necessarily that something is wrong with you, but you don't realize that you're a little bit you're, different. You're, you're a bit, right? little bit different until you're put in a place where, okay, oh, she, she just speaks her mind all the time. And I didn't know that until I was around people that, okay, well, then I used to be people being that forward. So again, I was forward in a, in a meet, meeting at work, and I said, said something to the effect of there is no separation between work and home, and that affects me mentally because I like to be able to, being at home is my safe space. It allows, this is a space that I control, more. I mostly control everything that's happening. And waking up and, you know, being, a, even though I'm on your computer, having somebody call me like, hey, sign in and do this. Like, you know, literally, you're at home, but you're, you're on the clock still. And it might work out for some people, especially people that have children. I'm not trying to be insensitive to people that have children, because, you know, with the whole pandemic happening and people that, you know, schools are closed, yeah. who are gonna, who's going to watch your, your, your child? Right. So it worked out for them where the work from home worked out for them. But even then, they even felt overwhelmed because now you're, you're at work, so you're still having to be doing work duties, but your and child the kids is on, are on top of you. The kids are on top of you or you're at, um, they're, they're doing their online schooling thing and they need to be monitored. So you can't, you still, you still have to be monitored with the computer because depending on their age, they can't 
do certain things on the computer without someone there helping them. But you're still at, you're still doing your work. So you have to split work duties between being a mom and you know being the teacher now, somewhat being the teacher. So it still affects the it affected people. I, my, my thing is that it affected everybody different. Yes. It affected everybody different. And depending on your lifestyle, it affected this whole pandemic affected people mentally in different ways. For me, it was because I couldn't separate work from home, and that was very that was a that I treasured that. That was a very vital part of my sanity. That when I left work, I was away from work because, and, I, and we I don't think we've gotten into what I the different things that I do. But um, I work as a forensic scientist, and I, I read a lot of crazy and, and violent information sometimes. And it's nice to shut that off and go home and pretend and try as best to be normal, acting like people aren't killing people and raping people and all these things. Like, because working in that environment and reading those things, like, I don't want, I don't want to ever feel like reading a scenario about somebody being raped or killed is not is normal. Because if, if it's like any other job you do. Once you learn it, okay, now it's, it's a routine. Right. You go in and you do it. I don't want, and for, for some jobs, that's fine. You go in, you know what you're doing. You know, it's, it's, it's not part of you. I don't want to ever have to feel like reading a scenario about somebody being killed in some violent way or reading a scenario about somebody being raped or robbed to become normal. That's not something you want to become normal. So I try to step away from that when, I'm, when, I'm, when I leave work and you know, as best not to become oblivious as, as if it never happened, but to, 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 for my own sanity, maintain some, some sort to, to protect my mind, to, to not feel like the world is all murdering and killing right. and all this. To not feel like that's all the world is made up of. I need to be able to step away from that and have some kind of alternate universe for myself. And in working from home, I was slightly robbed of that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I vocalized that in a meeting and it, I don't, want this, I don't want my coworkers to be watching YouTube and take this to my manager, but I vocalized that and um, <laughs> it, it might not have, um, I don't want to say it didn't work out in my favor, but I think people, you know, I can say something and you can perceive it a certain, you can yeah. receive it, I, I can say it with one intention and you receive it a different way. Yes. And I think when I said it, it was received um, differently, like I said it from a place of it's affecting my mental health, I would love to have my safe space back. And somebody else took it in. She doesn't want to do any work while I'm at work, mm. working twenty. Like I, when I'm at home, I'm I'm working, I'm doing everything, and they're taking it. I'm like, as I don't want to work. I'm like I have no problem doing my job. I just don't want. I just want my safe space. But that's all. That's all I want. I want to be able to separate my work life from my personal life and have that safe space. And all I do, all I, all I was trying to do at that point was protect my safe space because it was. With the, with the two areas mixing, it was starting to affect me mentally. So, you know, to, you know just back to the bottom line as, uh, of, you know, this, this, this whole pandemic affected people mentally. And even outside of this pandemic, people have mental health issues. We see, we are, you know, slightly mixing in, uh, mix in a little bit of, um, you know, the whole different treatment between races, where we see um, that when, a black man commits a crime, or somebody of a, a, um, a minority, or um, a person of color commits a crime, their mental health isn't always taken into consideration the same way. Like you watch the mm -hmm. news, no, for real, because when you watch the news, if like I think was it Parkland, was that, was that, was that young? Yeah, it was yeah, Parkland. Parkland. Yeah, you know, he, he shot up the school and and you know took many lives and. He, of course, you, you heard... Mental health was the first thing that came up. First thing that came up. And one thing that I said, and, and I could be right, or somebody else might have a different opinion, but one thing that I said, I, I feel like if he was black, he would not even walked out of the school alive. I don't believe he would have made it out. Like, if he was black or some other, or some other race, it depends, I don't think he would have made it out alive. And I, I see that often in, in, in the media, when a black man commits a crime, whether he's the victim or the suspect, they dig up dirt. I'm like, okay, so I'm the victim. I was killed, but you're seeing that I smoked weed. You're seeing that I did all these different things, all these different things that I did. I'm like, I'm dead. I'm the victim. How is it that the, you're digging up dirt on me when I was, even if I, even if I was all those things you're saying, in that particular, I want you to judge the situation that I was in when I lost How does that my life. I justify life. Exactly, judge the situation. In that moment, was I was what I did enough for somebody to take my life? Was was I doing anything for my life to be taken from me? 
So I understand that I might have done all the things that you're bringing up about me now, but in that moment, when my life was taken, was I doing something that justified my life being taken? Mm -hmm. Then all the other things don't matter. Because we, we can't give life, so we shouldn't feel so, we shouldn't just be taking it from people as if you, know, you can just dish it out just like that. But we do see that mental health issues aren't brought up when the person is a minority or um, person of color, but the first thing you hear when somebody um, of a you know, white or some other superior um, class is the first thing they bring up is they have mental is health issues, their parent, parents weren't there, all these different things. So we do see that um, even with mental health outside of this pandemic, I'm sure it, um, it affected everyone differently, but even outside of this pandemic, we see that mental health isn't considered as much for um, you know, minority, you know, black people when it, when it comes to certain things like, you know, we're human beings too. We actually work, our minds actually get affected. And essentially, um, depending on your background, sometimes the things we, we've come across, we've experienced certain things in life that there's no way you can experience those things and it doesn't affect you mentally. So, you know, that, that's, that's my take on mental health. I'm not a psychologist, and I'm, you know, but I'm just talking about my point of view as far as how it affected me and, mm -hmm. and the things that I've seen how people are treated differently based on you know your background, you know your mental health is considered or not considered depending on who you are or where you're from. So I think that's the, how I feel about that. I think the one thing with mental health, and I was thinking about this driving you know today, um, you know mental health is such. Mental health reminds me of like trying to chase a ghost in a sense, right? Because mm -hmm. you, you know you, you ask somebody, right? You know, are you happy? Mm. What does that mean? Are you sad? What does that mean? You know, Deandre, you, what makes you happy today might not make you happy tomorrow. That is very true. The definition of happiness is non-existent. The definition of sadness is non-existent. You know, what is depression? We're asking another human being who has the ability to feel the same thing to define depression. Like, all of these terms that we use to quantify something are, are in, 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 I don't know if this is, please don't quote me on this, but it, it feels almost make-believe in the sense, like, like, how do I know that? There's no scale. There's no, like, the, the, right. the, the same way, um, and if, we all did science, sciences in school, so we probably know that if we're measuring length, we have a centimeter. Exactly. Or meter. So we have a standard to measure that against. We have something to say, okay, how long is it? It's 10 centimeters. How much money is it? It's 10 cents. It's $10. Right. There's a SI, what we call an SI unit. There is, there is something to measure it against. And, and with happiness, as you're saying, with happiness or sadness, there is no... Essentially, maybe as a psychologist, they have their own little, you know, scale that they maybe sure. even determine if somebody is in a, you know, that I'm sure that's probably how they they determine if someone is psychotic versus somebody who is perfectly fine and they can stand trial versus somebody who's pretending to right. be mentally challenged. But um, they might have some skill. But you know, to the average person, like you know, you can. How do you measure, you know, happiness or sadness? You know. You know, one thing, something that makes you happy could make me sad. Right. That's that, that's essentially sometimes how relationships don't work. Something that that's making that one person happy is not necessarily making. So that's how we go our separate ways because we can't, you know, we can't come together on certain things because what you're doing might make me feel a certain way, but it, it's good for you. You got a job, a job opportunity or whatever it is. You going away makes me sad, but you going away is good for your career, so it makes you happy. You know, so something, one thing can make one person happy while making, simultaneously making somebody else sad. Right, and the, and the crazy thing about it is too, you know, it's like, so you have a psychologist, you know, sitting there, you know, judging the normality of another human being. How do I know that his, what he's going through isn't normal for him? Just because it's not normal to me doesn't mean it's not normal to you, Deandra. You know, and, and that's the thing that's crazy. It's like, even, even at the highest, most, simplistic kind of level oh you know he this this dude you know is running down the street you know screaming at the top of his lungs that might be abnormal to you and i but to, to, to that person that's normal so at what point how did we even come to a normative value in terms of saying oh this is normal that's not normal like this whole mental health thing it, it's all you're chasing a ghost yeah it, like there's nothing to measure anything it's all it's all hearsay it's all judgment of another human Who's susceptible to the same exact things to judge another human? Yeah, it, it's the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest thing, but I, I believe there is some precedence. You know, um, there, there there are people that have studied behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, 
again, this is not our area of expertise, but I believe, you know, like we are read at some point. There are people that um, study behavior and study, you know, essentially, not even not what's, what's normal, but they study different people in different situations. So put, put Deandra in this situation, how does she react to that? Right. Deandra, how does she react? So there's, you know, they essentially create their own, their own scale. And, and somewhat, there is somewhat um, a scale of what is considered normal. And, and um, that is what um, causes problems sometimes because, you know, this whole idea of normal might make somebody, you know, that, that's why somebody might start slitting their wrists. Right. Wrist, you know, because they're like, okay, well, I'm not normal. I'm not a normal teenage girl. I'm not a normal teenage boy because they've, they've given some model of what is considered normal or based on their friends and everybody else that they're in school with, this is normal. It's normal at this age to be doing this, this, and this. Why am I not taller? Why am I like, you know, all these things affect them mentally because some scale of normal was developed somewhere and that, now, that scale of normal, they're using that now to measure themselves to determine if they're normal mm -hmm. or not and that can affect you know, people in different ways. Some people embrace not being, and that's another thing. There is a scale somewhat, there is some scale of what's considered normal and somebody might want to be fall in line with what's normal and somebody might, somebody else might feel like, you know what, I'm glad I'm not normal. I'm glad to be that, that right. one person that's doing something different. That's what makes me me and that's what make, makes me unique. So, you know, this whole idea of normal or normal is, is kind of weird, but I believe that over time there has, there has been people that study behavior and kind of develop some precedence. That's how we know somebody has, you know, certain um, mental disorders when we, we call, you know, narcissistic, people that have no feelings, can't care right. for other people. There is somewhat, some idea of what normal people, a normal person would do. A normal person would care if somebody falls off the stairs. Somebody that's narcissistic or has just ha has some other scale that they work off of. They, they, somebody might fall off the stairs and they think it's funny. They literally right. somebody will, somebody will see you fall off the stairs, break your knee, break 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 everything, and it gives them some some grandiose feeling like, man, that was that's a rush. I want to see somebody else fall. That's how people are serial killers and stuff like that. People are just different, and sometimes the different that they are is not necessarily a good difference, and they, they put them in a separate class to themselves. Right. It is. So. It's just so crazy too, because I think to kind of like to kind of wrap this all up, I would say you know the whole thing with COVID, you know the, the whole COVID situation was funny because it took all the lines that you thought might have been drawn in the sand and it blurred them, it erased mm -hmm. them all, right? And it really forced you to almost hit the reset button and 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 learn relearn how to develop happiness. Yep. Relearn how to under, understand, you know, that makes me sad. Because like I had said earlier in the last episode, you know, everybody puts their happiness into external things. Mm -hmm. Once that external thing gets taken away, which COVID did to everybody, what, do you do now? what are you left with? You're, you're left scrambling. You have to redefine all of these definitions you thought you had. And I think that's why mental health is such an interesting thing because it, the, the definition evolves. It, it changes as does the individual. Every day, yeah. my version of happiness, your version of happiness, Deandre, is different, different. right? Exactly. And that's why it's so interesting, but also scary. Exactly. You know, th this pandemic has definitely given us, uh, um, or some people, like, you know, it's hard to speak for everybody. It might have affected someone so differently that they're in a, they're, they want to go back to what, what it was before. And for some people, they may have gained clarity from, you know, learning themselves more or just give, because what, what this pandemic has done, if it hasn't done anything else, is given you more time to learn something new. I, you know, I, I've learned a few new, I've put, poured myself into a few new things because I had the time. Like, what do you do with time? Like, you know, they say time wasted can never be regained. Time is just one thing that, you know, you can't get back. You know, you lose money, you can make it back. You lose time, that's it. That's it. So, what, you know, you have to, even in the middle of a crisis, they say you, can, you never waste a good crisis. And mm. I, I don't want to call any crisis good because, you know, I'm sure a majority of us, you know, we don't know how people think or how people work, but everybody works. But I, I, I want to believe that a lot of us would want to go back to before this pandemic where 200 and how many, I think it's about 250 or more Americans didn't die. I don't take any pleasure out of anybody dying. But at the same time, during this crisis, a lot of people got an opportunity to um, build themselves up in ways that you know they probably wouldn't have before, prior to this pandemic. So there's this little saying that I, I heard somebody say that you don't you don't waste a good crisis because you really can build you know in a crisis when right. when, when 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 something bad happens. If you're optimistic, then there must be a comeback. And if there's a comeback and you catch something, it's kind of like the stock market. When the stock market crashed, you can 
there's fear and there's greed. A lot of people are going to start selling. A lot of people are going to start buying. Some, some people are going to think of it as an opportunity to buy at the low because it must recover. Right. So a good crisis worked out for somebody that we really sure. bought stocks at the low, waiting for it to come back up. And somebody else might, um, it might have been a loss, but they like, oh my God, the prices are dropping. Mm -hmm. I'm selling everything. You, right. sell, you sell everything at the low, and now we're like, oh shoot, it came back up. So you, you just never waste a good crisis. Don't so. waste a good crisis. No, don't, don't waste a good hey. crisis. I'm sorry. You Nobody. guys are here first. Don't waste a good crisis, guys. Take, take advantage of the opportunity. There's always opportunities, even in the darkness, right? Take advantage of them. Um, but we're going to close this one out. The camera's starting to get hot, so I've got to shut it off for a second. Ooh. But that was episode 14.2 of the sit down with the one, the only, the Andrew. We talk about mental health. I think in the next one, we're going to get into a really interesting topic of forensic science. Forensic science. That's what Deandra does for work, and she's got some crazy stories. So uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. All righty. Later.